Welcome to Roundhill Radio, the podcast in Roundhill Community Church. Through our conversations, we discover the holy and the ordinary, find moments of grace and peace, and redefine what we're talking about when we talk about faith. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Leslie. What are we talking about today? We're talking about books. Oh, one of your favorite subjects. <laughs> you bet. One of your favorites. <laughs> I love it. It's funny you mentioned this because just today... Um, I was thinking about going to my new to me local library because mm. I have moved. Um, Congrats. Thank you. But I decided I'd wait till the whole family could go together Aww. and make it like a thing. A team. <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's really apparently very pretty. So I'm very excited. I'm, sa- I'm saving it as like my, um, my thing. Isn't that fun? I'm excited. I know. Fun. I love going to the library if you've moved into a place and yeah. suddenly there it is. It's a magical, magical place. Oh. Library. And I see that these are library books by their... I- they're charming stamps on the top of them. I've got some books. <laughs> got some books. Uh, yes. So this was the biggest understatement for you ever. <laughs> I have some books. So we have some amazing readers in our circle of friends and people we do. that we know. So, we do. Um, and one of the things that actually a couple of different people, but a family member of mine, one of my sisters happened to mention to me that during the pandemic, her interest in reading really fell off sharply. Mm. And I found that as well. Yeah. I don't know. It just wasn't the same to sit down, open a book. There's usually, that's usually such a pleasurable feeling. Yeah. Like you can't wait until the next chapter and mm-hmm. all of that. Ugh. Gone, gone, completely gone. And I did actually continue to kind of just try to keep reading through it. Uh-huh. You know, didn't have the same pizzazz. Yeah. But um, I'm just beginning to discover that that's changing a little bit. And so as I think about uh, the months of summer in particular, which can be really great, mm. you know, a great reading time, I'm putting aside some books uh, that I really want to take a look at. So I actually brought a couple. I love it. I love. I feel like every every year or so, <laughs> it just brings his books. It's like it's like show. We call it yeah, show and tell. Yeah, right. I well, love it. Ed's well, book club. Ed's mobile library. So by the way, I grew up in a rural area that had a mobile library. Really? And it was one of the fantastic experiences of my life that the mobile library would come out to the little rural road. Out we would go. And, Trapes our way in and look around, and it was just a big van. I was gonna say staffed with. I'm picturing like an ice cream truck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have the ice cream truck, so this had to be the this standard. Is, this is better. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at, at a couple of different things, um, especially because I'll be I'll be experiencing time of sabbatical mm-hmm. of, of actually pulling back from work for a while. So one of the books I wanted to read is called Listening for God. It's by Renita Weems, mm-hmm. African-American biblical scholar who taught for many years at uh, the university at Vanderbilt. Okay. And her subtitle is A Minister's Journey Through Silence and Doubt. Mm. And she basically talks about the wholesale collapse of her faith wow. at one point in her life. And I think that during the pandemic, a lot of clergy felt this erosion of certain feelings or attitudes about God, about faith, about community, and weren't sure how to stem the tide or Mm -hmm. whether that would ever come back, Mm -hmm. reverse itself, whatever the phrase would be. So I certainly found that I experienced some of that myself. And um, so I started reading this book and then had to put it aside, not because I didn't like it, but because other, you know, objectives kind of loomed in front of me for a while. (laughs) But I'm really looking forward to staying with this and seeing how she uh, worked through her own particular crisis. And although I'm not very far into the book, one of the things that she said that I was very intrigued by is that even though... There were long stretches. This went on for her for a period of years. This wasn't something that happened over a short space of time. She said she kept praying. Mm. She kept preaching. She kept teaching. And she really tried to find a way to work through it, trusting that, you know, somewhere there was a deep, deep underground reservoir that she would eventually connect with again. Mm -hmm. And that reminded me of a comment that the author C.S. Lewis once made, um, and he said, if you can't believe, make believe. Hmm. So it's it's not being deceitful. It's not, you're not lying to yourself. You understand where you are in your faith journey. Yeah. But maybe let the faith and the prayers and the hopes of other people carry you for a time. Yeah. 
And I really love that. The faith version of fake it till you make it. It is, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's okay. Yeah. So yeah. there we are. It's so fascinating. I'm, I'm looking forward to that that encounter with Renita Weems. Excellent. Get to know her better. Yeah. Um, the other book, this other book, I don't know anything about at all, but of course got it at the library. Of course. Well, it's got a great cover. It's got a great cover, right? And it is called How to Inhabit Time. Understanding the Past, Facing the Future, Living Faithfully Now by James K.A. Smith. And I think that speaks to me because, again, the pandemic kind of cleared out a lot of activities in the life of the church that probably used to be quite time-consuming, and now some of those aren't happening any longer. Mm. So our whole experience of time is changing And some people are feeling ill at ease with that and trying to figure out, okay, so now going forward, how do I make the best use of the time that's available to me? That's a question we've always been asking, but I think we're asking it in new ways now. So I I also love the the title, Inhabit the Time. Mm -hmm. It's like be fully in the time as opposed to riding over it. Yeah. You know, right. kind of being a tourist through it. Or letting it sort of pass you by. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. We yeah. use that phrase, just time passed me by. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, so the last book is by a man named Nir Eyal. Last name is spelled E-Y-A-L. And I was very much drawn to this title because it's a topic that seems to be on the minds of a lot of people in the congregation, but I, and, and just in the culture in general, mm-hmm. it's called indistractable as opposed to, you know, indestructible, right? Indistractable, how to control your attention and choose your life. I feel uh, personally targeted with this one. <laughs> I'm kidding. We all are. <laughs> I think we're in good company here. Yeah, it's yeah, become universal at this point, it feels like. I wish I, I could tell you the number of times in the last week uh, I have encountered the word distraction mm. and not as a positive force. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, as I wait these days, whether that's waiting for a medical appointment or if it's in a restaurant or if it's in whatever, wherever I happen to be where waiting is required, mm-hmm. I now have stopped looking at my phone in those How? places. <laughs> it's not easy and it's not do you get Do you get twitchy? <laughs> I do get a little twitchy. Yes, I do. Um, I just recognize that I was no longer taking notice of the Mm -hmm. world around me in the way that I used to. And so I simply put the phone away. Uh, Now, you know, quite often I just won't even take it with me if I go somewhere. And that Radical. 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 That's pretty amazing. Then I really do get twitchy. Well done. So, uh, you know, but it is liberating. Amazingly so. Yes. Right? Because it's now like retraining muscles is the only way that I can describe it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's remapping the neural pathways in the brain. Mm-hmm. And I think that the struggles I have had with reading personally for me mm-hmm. um, ha- do have something to do with over-reliance on the phone. Yeah. Um, because reading needs that settled time, a willingness to go page by page and to be patient with the process. Uh These are not things that necessarily go along easily with phone usage. True. Right? True. And so um, I'm really interested in this particular author's view of distraction and how he identifies it, how he explores it, and what he recommends in terms of moving beyond it. But turns out that just keeping the phone on silent or not even having it around makes it pretty easy to diminish the power of distraction. It's a great first step. I'll be interested to hear what else you glean. Maybe we should do an entire, I feel like we might need to do an entire episode on this book. I think so. (laughs) Give us some tips. And one thing I will say, I actually um, visited the author's website, which he encouraged because he has a free downloadable, basically small book Ah. in addition to this on how to develop, how to work our way through a series of exercises to diminish distraction. Mm. So he's very generous with the sharing of his resources. And I think he's a person who's, um, you know, really got our best intentions clearly in focus. Hopefully. And wants us to think about that whole notion of an undistracted life. And just makes me um, 
think about some other books that I've been reading along these lines that there is a prevailing view that distraction and distractibility are very much modern or contemporary phenomena. Sure. And that turns out not to be true. Really? Um, yes, indeed. Amazingly so. I was reading one great little essay by one person who was exploring the fact that um, so-called mystics or monks and nuns who lived during the Middle Ages and before were constantly struggling with distraction. Wow. That they felt like their minds were just roaming, roaming, roaming all the time. Mm. And so this is more deeply human than we recognize. It's, mm. it's perhaps exacerbated by the technology, right. but I'd be reluctant just to blame the technology. Mm -hmm. I think this is a human question. And why is it that we're so easily mm -hmm. distracted? Or, or I shouldn't say maybe so easily, but why is it a challenge for so many people? Right. Um, so I thought that was rather interesting that, you know, these monks and nuns from five, 600, 700 years ago were also struggling with this question. That's fantastic. Do you read, uh, do you read fiction? I do, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> I, was, I, you know, I was just thinking about, you've got three books. I imagine you to be a rather uh, speedy reader. And you are going to be on sabbatical for a significant amount of time. So I'm eyeing about, what, <laughs> two weeks maybe? <laughs> Max? If I get trucking along, yeah. I, can, I can move through things pretty quickly. I had a feeling. <laughs> um, but it's a great question, and I will say, I will mention someone's name who's been mentioned to me quite a bit recently, the name Louise Penning, as a person who's, uh, many people have recommended her books to me. I think it's detective fiction, I'm not exactly sure, but okay. I've noticed that several people have come to me just out of the blue to say, oh, you know, I'm reading this person, and you may want to try that. So, Fantastic. so yeah, I'm going to try to get a little balance, and I actually do read a fair bit of poetry. And it's an interesting thing to read a whole book of poetry, yeah. you know, as opposed to just a poem here and there, right. because then you really get a sense of the author's style and use of language. And mercifully, most poetry books are rather short, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do a deep dive pretty quickly. A little but, palate cleanser. <laughs> exactly. So for my poet fixation, that's, that's how I'm going to resolve that. I love it. Wonderful. Well, we'd love to also hear what you are reading this summer. What are you, what's on your bedside table <laughs> beckoning you, uh, encouraging you to dive in? I will say I'm actually a phone reader. Oh, good. I like, yeah. cause I like to read with the lights off, which is not helpful when you have a book. <laughs> Right. And I like that you can set the background as black and the text is like a, ma um, True. Say like a, a nice medium gray. So uh -huh. the, the contrast is actually pretty low. So the light's very low. Yes. So you can still see it. Yeah. But it's, you know. The brightness isn't bothersome. The brightness doesn't bother some. So you don't have the bright white. So that's, I, I in defense of technology, <laughs> it does allow for, for nighttime reading. Love it. Without disturbing your partner. <laughs> well, happy reading to you as well. Thank you. Well, we'd love to hear what you guys are reading. Let us know in the comments below or shoot us an email. And thank you for listening. Roundtill Radio is brought to you by the friends and members of Roundtill Community Church. For more information, please visit roundtillradio.org.